Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A Tacoma woman who rolled her minivan on Highway 2 near Stevens Pass faces a possible charge of vehicular assault. Three North Central Washington pre-construction infrastructure projects have received funding from the Washington State Public Works Board. Seasonally cool over the next couple of days before a heat wave begins on Friday and continues well into next week. The former school custodian arrested on suspicion of sexual misconduct with a student will be held on $50,000 bail. Michael Ray Van Heusen made his first court appearance yesterday by video in Douglas County Superior Court. He's not yet been charged, but East Wenatchee police suspect him of third degree child rape, molestation, child porn possession, and related crimes for alleged sexual contact with a student at Sterling Junior High School while Van Hoosen worked there. The allegations here are alarming and I think speak for themselves, namely that the defendant may have exploited a position of authority and trust over a student at a school where he worked and engaged in a pattern of deplorable sexual conduct with a minor that allegedly involved rape, attempted rape, molestation, depictions of sexual conduct, and immoral communications. He's potentially facing years in prison, which raises concerns for the state of a motive to flee. We're asking the court to make a finding that release on personal recognizance alone will not reasonably assure future court appearances and that the defendant is a danger to commit a violent offense or interfere with the administration of justice. Asking the court to set bail in the amount of $100,000. Mr. Van Housen is been a lifelong resident of Washington State and Chelan Douglas County essentially his entire life. Um, you know, when I talked to him this morning, he's very rattled with the, the allegations in this case. The rules on, on pretrial release, you know, provide the presumption of pretrial release uh, for any defendant who's accused of a non capital crime. This is a non capital crime. There's no criminal history to think that he's going to be a flight risk. Um, and so, you know, I think that the appropriate uh, route at this venue is to release on personal recognizance. Uh, Mr. Van Housen, in light of the nature of the charges and the number of charges, I think there's enough exposure to um, prison time here. I'm concerned about that. I realize there's no criminal history, but the charges are concerning to the court. And... Um, I am going to set your bail in the amount of $50,000. A Tacoma woman who rolled her minivan on Highway 2 near Stevens Pass faces a possible charge of vehicular assault. 32-year-old Jennifer M. Hay was eastbound about five miles east of the summit just before 5 a.m. on Saturday when she overcorrected and swerved into the westbound guardrail. Her Kia Sedona rolled down the embankment, leaving her 40-year-old passenger with a broken wrist and related injuries. Washington State Patrol troopers said Hay showed signs of intoxication. She made her first court appearance in Chelan County Superior Court on Monday. Three North Central Washington pre-construction infrastructure projects have received funding from the Washington State Public Works Board. The city of East Wenatchee was awarded $1 million of combined loans and grants for the North Kentucky Avenue Corridor Improvements Project. Pateras and TWISP also received combination funding of loans and grants for the water system plans. Pateras was allotted $100,000 and TWISP received $150,000. The board awarded a total of $4.37 million to eight plans around Washington State with the goal that they would accelerate project readiness to move construction forward. When we come back, new cameras keeping an eye on the Lake Wenatchee backcountry should help detect wildfires before they pose a threat. The state fire marshal's office has released a list of nine important guidelines to help every grill master cook up a summer feast safely. And we'll update you on the health status of canine Kate, the Chelan County Corrections drug sniffing dog who's been experiencing medical complications. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News.
I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. New cameras keeping an eye on the Lake Wenatchee backcountry should help detect wildfires before they pose a threat. Lake Wenatchee Fire and Rescue has gone live with two wildfire detection cameras installed last week on Mattapoc Ridge near Plain and Round Mountain near Merritt. A grant from Alert West is paying for the technology which can detect smoke columns and heat signatures associated with new fire outbreaks. The camera feeds can be publicly viewed online at Alert Washington Live. While barbecuing is a summer staple, it can be a hazardous activity. Over 2,000 fire incidents occurred last year alone from outdoor cooking and accumulated over $10 million in losses. The state fire marshal's office has released a list of nine important guidelines to help every grill master cook up a summer feast safely. Check out our website at ncwlife.com to read those safety tips and make sure you won't be the barbecue's cook who can't handle the heat. Corrections Deputy Jacob Lewis gave Chelan County Commissioners an update on his canine partner, Kate, who's been experiencing medical complications. At this morning's Commissioners meeting, Lewis explained that he worked with both veterinarians in Wenatchee and Spokane to determine the cause of fluid buildup in Kate's abdomen. And while they wait for a full diagnosis, a CT scan found issues with her liver. At the meeting, Lewis said that over $12,000 has been raised so far for Kate who also has a treatable B12 deficiency in just four weeks, exceeding his goal of $8,000. Kate is one of two narcotics dogs in the state who works in a county jail, and she's trained to detect six odors, including fentanyl. Lewis explained to the commissioners what treatment could mean for Kate's career. The vet team, both here and in Spokane, their goal is to get Kate back to work. Um, right now, uh, based off of the information I've given, it's about a 50-50. So um, our specialist is unsure because if it is just treat the, the liver and um, treating that, that symptom, uh, it can be treated with medication. However, the specialist did tell me that she's never really worked with detection dogs and she's unsure um, if the medication that we use to treat the liver issue uh, would have an effect on her ability to smell. So the only way we're going to know is get her on the treatment, wait a few weeks, do some training with her, see how she responds uh, to the medication and if she's able to continue to, to work. And if so, great, then we have her for at least another year or two. Um, if not, then we're going to have to look at retiring her. Coming up next in tonight's feature story, we'll tell you how Garlini's Restaurant in Wenatchee is changing one of its recipes all because of a social media post. Expect temperatures to be cooler than normal over the next few days before things really heat up this weekend. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. 
That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Hey there folks, Blueberry Carrie here to invite you on out to Blueberry Hills to experience some real treats. Take a look at our homemade cream pies, our amazing cheesecakes, and don't forget our famous banana pudding. Remember, we're more than just great treats. People come from all over the world to experience what has been called one of the best destination restaurants in the Pacific Northwest. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson. It's where the world is coming to. Well, looks like our surgery patient is feeling better today. Yep, I didn't need any oxy today. I thought I'd do a little surgery on the drain. Huh. Do you need your pain pills anymore? No. Well, we should get them out of the house. There are places to drop them off. Yeah, okay. Actually, I can do that right now. And I will look at the drain. Prevent opioid misuse. Find safe medication return options near you at med-project.org. Castle Rock International is the Northwest premier real estate agency for large acreage properties, farms and ranch land, lodging and resorts, and other distinctive commercial real estate. Professional, knowledgeable, and discreet, Castle Rock International has the listings and the buyers you have been looking for. Contact John McNamara at Castle Rock International today or visit their website for more information on this award-winning company. In tonight's feature story, Garlini's Napolitana has been a staple in the valley since it first opened in East Wenatchee back in 1982. Now the restaurant is located in Wenatchee under the ownership of Greg Still, who is passionate about the sense of trust that customers have installed in his business. It's because of this trust that when Craig witnessed a Facebook post complaining about their crab and shrimp fettuccine not being what it once was, he immediately got together with his management team to return the dish to its prime. I bought the restaurant from Rick and Diane Garlini back in 1996. So it's kind of funny, I've owned it longer than the Garlinis have. We've been in this valley for a long time and we plan on continuing to be in this valley for a long time. Customers have chosen us and trusted us. It's important to me, it's important to us that that's part of our, our culture and we take that very seriously. We had a complaint on one of our dishes. I saw it first on, on Facebook. I think we saw it on a Sunday night. We had a manager meeting Monday morning. You know, we just really talked a lot about it and did some soul searching and, you know, sort of looking in the mirror and taking ownership of it. Our business is different. You know, the hospitality industry is, it's, uh, it's different than any other business that I can think of. You know, we bring raw materials in the back door, we do a manufacturing process, and then we sell it and serve it on site, which makes us different. Post COVID, we've, we've been sort of living in the, you know, the upside down. We've just seen, you know, some struggles in food chain and, and things that we're really used to just having as part of, you know, our daily, weekly deliveries and now we're scrambling. You know, we just had a product that snuck in our back door that wasn't up to our standards. And uh, that was the easiest thing to, to fix. And then really just to go back to the basics um, of saute cooking. And saute cooking is, is different. You're working within this hot surface. You've got a group of, in, uh, of ingredients and how and when they hit the pan and how long they're in the pan can really make a big difference on how that dish comes out. So part of that was just going back to the basics and slowing down a little bit and going, let's, let's really you know, identify where, um, you know, where we got off course and then let's get back on track. I love that dish and I think everybody else will too. 
Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. After a rainy, cool day yesterday, things warmed up today, but boy, you can sure feel that humidity out there today with the wet, wet surroundings from the rain we picked up yesterday. Also a little bit of that haze out there today. Luckily for us, it's in the mid and upper levels, but you could sure see it out there today. Air quality is good, so that's a good thing, but a lot of that haze, especially farther north in our viewing, area up around OMAC. But I'll tell you what, cool today and we're going to see that the next couple of days. But enjoy it because we are going to see above normal temperatures in our 6 to 10 day outlook. This goes all the way until August 17th. And here we are in this reddish color in Washington State. And that means a 70 to 80 percent chance that we will see above normal temperatures going forward the next couple of days. And I'm telling you folks, next week we could be talking a stretch of 100 degree days. And we'll get to that in a second. But today's high temperatures back to where we should see him for this time of year. 87 unofficially today. 89 is where we should be for a high on August 8th. 104, a record high, and that was set back at a very hot August of 1971. 63 this morning, and that's right in line with where we should be for lows at 63. 53, our record, and that was set in 1992. All right, rec uh, rain totals from yesterday. I had to go down a little bit. I thought we saw two tenths of an inch of rain. It was officially 15 hundredths, and boy, it sure seemed like a lot more than that. 3.39 our total for the year, and that makes us below normal, about an inch and a quarter for the year. Sunrise 548 this morning, and it sets tonight at 824. Taking a look at what we can expect as we get you into Wednesday, temperatures will be nice, nice and mild tomorrow, slightly below normal, 86 is for Moses Lake and Afreda, 85 for Quincy, and then a little bit cooler back to the west, Wenatchee and Eniat, we will see about 84, 85 in Chelan, and the warm spot, as usual, up in OMAC tomorrow with a high temperature of 87. Tonight, we can expect a mix of clouds and uh, some haze out there tonight. I think most of that will subside overnight. We'll see a little bit of it tomorrow. Mild tonight with low temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, so a little bit above where we should be for lows. For Wednesday then, mostly sunny, a bit breezy. Here's that area of high pressure nosing in, low pressure to our northeast, and that will kick up those winds in the afternoon tomorrow. Temperatures comfortable, as I mentioned, into those mid 80s. And then as we get you to Thursday, sunny skies, it will remain on the mild side. We're going to continue with a cooler northwesterly flow into our area for Thursday. High temperatures again below normal in the mid 80s. And then by Friday, that is all going to change. Sunny skies and warmer temperatures Maybe breezy at times here in the Wenatchee area. Not bad for Friday with high temperatures in the upper 80s. So back to normal Friday and then well above normal as we get you into the upcoming weekend. Mostly sunny. Once again, some breezy conditions in north central Washington on Saturday. But we are going to warm up to about 90 degrees for a high temperature for Saturday. Boy, all of north central and eastern Washington, a nice warm up. And look at how these colors darken up as we get into Sunday. Mostly sunny and warmer. We are talking highs on Sunday to end your weekend in the lower 90s. And then Monday, hot. Capital hot weather ahead. Sunny and hot for Monday. We are talking high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s, and that goes for all of the western United States. And folks, it looks like it's going to stay that way well into next week. Let's take a look now at that seven-day forecast. 67 overnight tonight. Breezy, mostly sunny, and 84 tomorrow. A nice cool stretch let's call it for wednesday thursday and even into friday nice days for thursday and friday mid to upper 80s and then the heat moves our way after kind of a breezy day on saturday and 90 we will warm up mostly sunny and 93 sunday sunny and 97 your high temperature on monday and that's a look at your north central washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with eric grandstrom and more as the ncw life evening news continues right after this at da davidson in wenatchee they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan a plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement 
VA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Well, here we are at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium, the site for game one of the West Coast League Division playoffs between your Wenatchee Apple Sox and the Victoria Harbor Cats. Wenatchee goes for their sixth WCL title starting tonight against Victoria, a team they split with during the regular season. Dan Koontz had a chance to catch up with head coach Mitch Darlington earlier to discuss game one of the playoffs. The marathon is over. The sprint begins. You can't win the championship unless you're in the playoffs. And the quest to win the WCL championship begins tonight right here at Paul Thomas Senior Field. Apple Sox and Victoria Harbor Cats, 635 first pitch. We'll have it right here on the NCAA Life Channel. For the first time all year, we get to visit with Mitch Darlington. Uh, two and four road trip to wrap up this season. Probably not what you wanted. But on the other hand, you knew before you even headed up to Bellingham and then over to Canada, you knew you had already punched your ticket to the playoffs. The question is where you were going to end up. Talk right. about, talk about the, the last six games. Yeah, you know, we uh, you obviously wanted to have a little better finish to our season. Um, but, yeah, you know, we were in a weird spot where um, we were able to kind of plan for Tuesday, plan for tonight, um, and, and just kind of, um, you know, pencil in and kind of script out our pitching for the weekend and knew which guys we wanted to use over the weekend and which guys we wanted to uh, have ready to go Tuesday and Wednesday of this series. So, um, you know, not the finish we wanted, but uh, happy where we're at and, and ready to go tonight. Uh, tonight's a big game. You don't want to go to Victoria down at one nothing hole. You just don't. Right. Uh, we've had a lot of great home cooking. So what's your uh, approach for uh, tonight's game? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, all hands on deck tonight. You know, we have uh, Sam Round starting on the mound tonight. Uh, he's been lights out for us all year, um, you know, and then going to have our big horses, Canfield and Williamson, ready to go in the bullpen and, um, you know, doing whatever it takes to get game one and then, uh, and then head to Victoria tomorrow. Knowing uh, before you even played Sunday, or up at the regular season that you were going to be the number three seed out of the north uh, you knew that was locked and so how did you approach sunday's game knowing you were going to have it was a sunday night game going to be a long road trip you know where you're going to be so how did you decide to, to for instance pitching knowing yeah. that you're not going to go any higher or lower than you already were in the standings yeah we uh we decided to roll out trent liolas uh sunday a kid that actually has to take off uh this morning and head back home so you know, we figured if, if we're going to lose pitching uh, before playoffs, let's use the guys and uh, use them as much as we can before they head off. So, uh, you know, Trent gave us a good start, went about five innings, um, you know, and then we just kind of pieced it together from there, trying to get through that game. And, and uh, again, trying not, trying not to uh, blow out our bullpen before uh, this important series. You're 0-0 now as we go into the playoffs. Um, how hard is it, in, in your experience, this is your second year in a row, how hard is it to get the guys to adjust now it's now a sprint. Now it's the first one to X right. amount of games wins it all. How do, you, how, do you, how do you make sure that they approach that the right way? Because yeah. there is no tomorrow, perhaps, after Wednesday. Right, right. I think, uh, you know, just getting guys bought into one day at a time. And I think, you know, honestly, we've done a pretty good job this summer, um, you know, compared to last year of not looking ahead and just taking it every day, being the same guy, being the same player, being the same coach every single day. Um, 
And, and so I think that's going to pay off for us. But yeah, you know, definitely it's, it's nice in a way to have this reset button where, hey, here we go. Your records are thrown out the window. What we've done in the past doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's all hands on deck and it's playoff baseball, so that's what it's all about. Frankie Carney has a 16 game uh, hitting streak. He's just been hitting lights out. Uh, he's probably the key to your offense going forward into the playoffs, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. He's uh, you know solidified himself as our leadoff hitter, um, everyday player for us here this last month. And he really is just what makes us go, man. He gets on the bases, he's a little reckless at times, but. Uh, he, he just makes things happen. He's, uh, he's a, a Shoichiro Oyama 2.0, you know, same school, a UC Irvine guy, and you can kind of tell he's learned from Joe. Um, and, uh, he, yeah, he's, he's just been kind of the engine of our offense. 21 uh, home victories this year at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Uh, that's a franchise record. They never won 21 at home. Home cooking here tonight is important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Fans, the whole nine yards. Yeah, no, we're, no, we're excited to have game one here and uh, playing in front of our fans. and. Uh, our guys love to play here. Our guys love playing in front of our community and, and putting on a show for them. So I think, uh, I think we'll be ready to go. One last question, Mitch, we'll cut you loose. I know you're a busy guy. Um, it, I mentioned this to Joel uh, last time I talked to Joel. I'm impressed the fact that this team is having fun, which is a great deal of playing baseball is having fun, but they also have an, an emotional maturity about them. They don't seem to get too high. They don't seem to get too low. Mm -hmm. They seem to have that good, steady, let's play baseball uh, kind of mentality that a lot of 19 and 20 year olds simply don't have. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that goes back to what, what I was mentioning, you know, we've preached all year is being that same person every day. Can't be too high, can't be too low, cannot ride the roller coaster in this league, man. There's just there's too many games in a short amount of time that you just can't get hooked on every win, every loss. You just gotta be steady. And um, I think our guys have done a great job buying into that and, uh, and having some fun in the meantime. The first of what we hope to be many playoff home games is tonight here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. If you can't make it to the ballpark, and we've said this a million times, come to the ballpark. If you can't make it, you can watch it on the NCAA Life TV or listen to Joel's call on Sunny FM. And back to you. Brandon Schmidt and I will have the call with our pregame coming up at 630. Uh, first pitch at 635 here on the NCW Life channel. There are three other West Coast League Division playoff series also beginning tonight. Bellingham is on the road at Kelowna, while Cowlitz is hosting Corvallis. Those games start at 635. Portland hosts game one of its series with Ridgefield. That starts at 705. All the series will shift to the higher seeds tomorrow night. Well, the Mariners are looking to extend their winning streak at home tonight against the San Diego Padres. M's trying to go for their sixth in a row. Logan Gilbert will get the nod for Seattle. He'll go up against the starter for the uh, uh, Padres. It's Nick Martinez, first pitch at 640. That's on Root Sports Northwest. In American League West play last night, San Francisco scored six runs in the top of the ninth inning to come from behind to beat the Angels 8-3. Travis Jankowski's RBI fielder's choice in the top of the eighth broke a tie, and Texas would go on to beat Oakland 5-3. Rangers' lead in the division is three games over Houston and six and a half in front of Seattle. Well, Tariq Woolen made his return to practice yesterday for the Seattle Seahawks. He's been out since OTAs when he tore a meniscus in his knee. He said he's excited to get back on the field with his teammates. Oh, shoot, I'm anxious, but at the same time, I've been taking it patient. And I know when the time comes, it'll be time for me to be out there. But so far, I've been taking all the mental risks I can. And, uh, shoot, just doing whatever the coaching staff and the training staff have been telling me to do. So that way, we can follow a plan to where I can come back healthy and come back at the right time. Well, is not expected to play on Thursday night when the Seahawks start the preseason against the Minnesota Vikings. That kickoff set for 7 o'clock. It's on King 5. Here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium, where we'll have live coverage of the playoffs between Wenatchee and Victoria, I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Live channel. Have a happy Tuesday. And as we leave you tonight, not every construction job needs a flatbed truck. Last week, the U.S. Forest Service sent a string of mules into the Medhow Valley Ranger District for a bridge replacement project. The Luis Lake Trail runs into the Sawtooth Wilderness, but the trail bridge across South Creek has been claimed by rot. The mules were deployed to carry decking boards and other lumber supplies to the bridge site for repairs. Pack animals often have to be used for bridge and trail work on national forest lands and areas where vehicle access is restricted. 
And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.